Hello and happy Saturday food support group. So good to see you guys. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, my heart is full. Um, just seeing all of these faces of, um, people that have been on this journey with me. Um, and I've get to got to be on their journey with them. Um, it is, it is no small thing that you allow me and honor me to be in your life and to be a part of this journey with you. And I don't ever want to take that for granted. There are so many other things that you could be doing with your time right now, but you're here. You prioritized being here today at this moment with me. Um, and I am so honored by that because it is literally a privilege to get to see you and to get to witness and be a witness in your journey. Um, so thank you so much. I, I genuinely love you guys so much. Um, so, uh, Jackie's going to start us off and Jackie found some stuff in her deep freeze. Uh, so ja Jackie, what did you find? So, uh, for the past month, maybe month and a half, my husband and I have been trying to eat all the freezer foods that we have because we're going to get a half a cow, um, mid November. So today something I've never had, but I always said I was going to try is lamb. And I oh. actually, this is a pound of lamb chops, I think. And then this one is spring grass fed, raised without an antibiotics, lamb chops as well. So I'm excited to try these today and I will report back on whether I like lamb or not. Awesome. I've never, had it, never, ever had it. Does anybody have any ideas that you've cooked lamb before and you have an idea for how how to cook lamb. I I do because oh, I, go was, ahead. I was sort of this is Becky. I was kind of with Jackie where I was like, I'm not eating the little lamb. And even my granddaughter, she said, Is this a pet lamb? Because they have toys that are lambs. And she's like, I'm not eating lamb. So we were at a Thanksgiving feast about maybe three years ago. And we had turkey, but our son brought a rack of lamb that he got at Costco that's New Zealand lamb and he chopped it up so each piece was individual and it has like a little stick on it and they called them lamb pops to make it more friendly. <laughs> it was an hors d'oeuvre and his wife marinated them in olive oil, garlic, rosemary, lemon and just a, like whatever you like, you know, but lately I've been really lazy. My husband and I just put salt on them. Then they're cut individually and we barbecue them just for a few minutes so that they're still somewhat pink in the inside they are like butter the fattier the cap is the better because sometimes they make them kind of lean you know in the united states everybody wants the fat cut off but if you can get really fatty ones and i ate one and i'm like oh my gosh why was i so resistant to eating the lamb you know because it was all psychological and so then our our grandchildren we had a big plate of lamb pops and all the five grandchildren were all around they're all like five and seven years old and the one little granddaughter said, I'm not eating the pet lamb. I said, no, these aren't pets. And so then everybody was eating like three or four of them. And these things are expensive. So like, oh my gosh, we're, you know, but they're eating them all up. And she goes, I'll try one when there was like one left. And she's like, grandma, I'll have some more. Can grandpa cook me some more? I'm like, there are no more. <laughs> so she was really sad. And she goes, next time I'm taking a bunch. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Awesome. <laughs> whatever um my little four-year-old says these are aromatic herbs grandma <laughs> so she's like into gourmet cooking at four so whatever you like i just do salt because that's easy right now but whatever you want to dress them up they're so delicious you'll like awesome. them awesome thank you so much for that I, that idea do what i highly recommend it eating with other people that love them and they're like oh my god give me one <laughs> the competition of eating them helps awesome. you awesome Awesome. Thank you so much. And then in the chat, uh, Shelly says, I love lamb chops in the air fryer. Ooh. Um, and then someone said, uh, with feta, um, uh, and then, uh, oh, uh, Andia, sorry. I couldn't read it. Andia said with feta. And then Monica says, I sear them in ghee and finish them in the oven. That sounds incredible. Tom oh. says that lamb is his wife's favorite meal. 
Um, and then Shelly said, Billy Doe meats has the best lamb, especially if you don't enjoy the gamey taste. Oh, and then Andia said raw feta. Mm. So, Jackie, you got some ideas. Thank you for all the ideas. I'm going to copy all that down. I'm probably going to just try salt to start with because I want to see, is it gamey? I hope not. I, I've, I've, and I've thought about trying the Billy Doe meats because I've heard many people rave about them, that they're really good. So yeah, excited. Awesome. I think awesome. Karen Miles, I think Karen Miles got me to buy these because yeah. I often am on the, you know, video chatting with her while I shop. I'm like, what do you think of this? Let's try that. So, uh, <laughs> I bought them and then I promptly put them in my freezer and I thought, oh, I'll have them some other time. I never did have them. So yeah, Great. I'm excited to try it. Well, Thanks, let us, everyone. I'm sure, I'm sure you'll post about it, but let us know uh, how it turns out. I will. Awesome. Thanks, Jackie. Um, and so uh, Becky, um, you have been on quite a health journey and yeah. um, while you were gone recovering, um, we had a couple of people that asked how you're doing. So could you just give us a really brief um, overview sure. on an update on, on how you're doing? Thank you. Thank you for um, saying that you were asking after me. That that's They were, amazing. they were, we had, we so, had multiple people ask. I had a, I had a very interesting and wonderful experience. Dr. Cyrus took care of me in Palm Beach, Florida, and we live in California. So we flew there uh, for surgery. And I had surgery on August 4th of this past August to reverse the duodenal switch weight loss surgery that I had 11 years ago in California. And so I'm healing. I'm, I'm pretty much healed from all that, you know, just the incisions and stuff like that. That took a little bit of time to getting used to. So I did a progression of, um, broth and very liquid diet for a few days and then can eat soft food. But now I'm eating kind of tons of bacon and steak and eggs and hamburger, just kind of whatever I want. So um, we're, we're, but what I was going to say was so interesting with Dr. Cyrus's treatment, which I don't think I would have got anywhere else. Is he had me on 10 days in the hospital with, in, with the IV nutrition of every little particle of nutrition that I needed that he's prescribed specifically based on my needs. And I think that really gave me a big jump start and helped me to heal. And in the beginning, when I first came home, we were in Florida almost two weeks. I would say that my neuropathy and uh, my Parkinson's actually was, was really dim diminishing and improving. But then as the weeks have gone by, I've noticed that Maybe I'm not eating pro en enough nutrition or maybe my supplements are gone. So we're are a little bit low. So we're working on that. I have appointments with him to try to tweak my blood work because I feel like, I don't know if it was a placebo effect. It's just like, wow, I'm feeling so great. But some of the neuropathy in my right side has returned, not nearly as painful as before, but I'm still trying to search and look for the best uh, eating pattern to address that. So any ideas, I'm always open to that. And then my Parkinson's is not, okay, I'd wish it would just respond like in a day, I'm better now and <laughs> I can walk. So that's frustrating to me because I do still walk with a cane. I'm, I'm kind of getting depressed about it because I really was hoping to feel so much better in that aspect as well. But I think it takes time. So I'm, I'm here, I'm trying to be, stay motivated. Um, he actually has me eating a few more animal carbs in the form of dairy and raw, raw, raw whole milk, which has like lactose in it, because he thought my, my um, insulin response needed to be spiked a little bit more, which I'm not sure if I'm explaining that right. But he, he has me eating animal carbs and um, introducing a few things like that to try to uh, see what's the best form for muscle building. And he has a wonderful nutritionist, uh, Cheryl Fox, that works with him. So we're kind of tweaking things, but I'm healing really well. Before I had the surgery, I was trying to do a high fat diet with a DS, which makes you malabsorb 80% of the fat you eat. So it basically says fat's terrible. Let's poop it out. So e eating a, a high fat diet with the DS just really induced super chronic diarrhea. So I became like terrible with that. And even if I tried to adjust it a little bit, it kind of just got in this vicious cycle. So 
thank God. I was like, we were so like, yay, I'm pooping regularly now. <laughs> and it was so funny because I sent out this little pooch emo poop emoji to all my family. They're like, yay. <laughs> so that, so now I have like more normal bowel movements. I'm not consciously always like worried about where can I go to the bathroom in the next half an hour or the next 45 minutes. I can take a walk. I can go to the store. I can run errands and not like, okay, when am I going to have to run to the bathroom in the middle of shopping. That's actually such a relief. That's like worth the travel. Just, wow. Just for that. And then I've gained, I was weighing about, I'm 5'4", I'm 65. I don't know if I was really underweight on the scale. I was 18% body fat before I had surgery. So now I'm, he wanted me to gain weight and everybody like is saying like, let yourself gain some weight to get more nutrient, more nourished. So I'm not worried about that. Kelly Hogan on one of her Instagram says, buy some dresses <laughs> so you can expand a little bit without it being tight around your waist. So I got some cute little sundresses in California. It's still warm. So I've gained about 15 pounds and I'm not really worried about it. And I'm a little concerned because we're hoping to go to Minnesota and I don't think the sundresses will be appropriate for winter in Minnesota. <laughs> so I've got to get some pants, but I'm just trying to let my body heal because I had this basic induced malnutrition for 11 years. So wow. I'm that he, I still have a gastric sleeve and then a slight malabsorption at the beginning of my intestines, but pretty much is back to normal as he could possibly do. He's an excellent surgeon. And so I think if I would have, like some people I've talked to on my DS support group from 11 years, they had also needed to get their intestines reworked. They went to like a general surgeon. They, they've had a lot of problems where I have not because Dr. Cyrus gave me that nutrition to heal. And um, some of the people I'm talking to even years out, they're still on a pretty soft diet and can't tolerate much real food. So that's not fun. So I, I can really eat anything I want as long as I'm chewing carefully. I have eaten like a few raw carrots or pickles or an apple because I'm just trying to experiment like what would feel good. I'm pretty much carnivore, but I'm trying, like I've tried a few things and boy, if I didn't chew them properly, I felt like I had a lot of cramping, but now I, I you know, I'm aware of what to do and I'm feeling really good, but I'm, I'm, really now trying to figure out the best treatment for Parkinson's. So anybody awesome. stories about healing from Parkinson's, tell me them because that would inspire me. Absolutely. Well, and I, I think uh, Tom said it, you know, best in the chat, he said, you have to give yourself more time to recover and heal. And um, unfortunately there's probably not a guidebook on <laughs> how Becky heals from, you know, this specific surgery, um, because everybody is different. Um, and I know that I know that I know that increasing that nutrition absorption and that utilization, um, is going to continue to increase that healing for you. Um, not only mentally, um, but physically as well. Um, so I'm so excited. Emily, I'll tell you real generally what I'm doing. I'm eating a lot of butter. I kind of like I'm eating butter all day long. Whenever I want butter, I'm just like slicing off a hunk. I, I don't buy it in the little tiny sticks. I buy it in that Kerrygold stick, which is kind of like a double stick. But I might eat like most of that during the day. Yeah. I eat a bacon. Um, I, I'll share a steak with my husband. And then I'll eat a hamburger. And then I'll eat some eggs. But I'm sort of trying to do a high fat and how I'm not really monitoring how much I'm eating. I'm just eating whenever I'm hungry, but trying to have a little bit of space in between because Dr. Cyrus says, try not to snack all day. So what would you say? Cause would you say that that sounds logical what I'm doing there? Absolutely. And I, I always say that you need to follow your, your inner knowing um, your inner clarity, because um, that is the best way. And it sounds like you're getting those results, you know, I mean, with you being able to have normal poops now, um, that, you know, you're on the right track. Um, and, and you can tell whenever you, like you said, you ate some foods and you can feel it in your, your gut, not feel right. Um, and so it sounds like you're eating the foods that, uh, that, you know, are best for you. And, and, and 
what I'm hearing from you is that you're not as, um, controlled by maybe jumping off plan as you were before, um, like with the cookies and the other things, the sugar. Yeah. Actually, I've had a little trouble with more cravings before I had the surgery. I was like super like dedicated to not eat any carbs pretty much at all, but I felt very satisfied, even though I was malabsorbing a lot of food. I felt like if I was eating bacon or butter, I was like, I don't want to eat anything else. Now I'm kind of almost feeling like I'm maybe my blood sugar is fluctuating. And sometimes I was like, I got to have some carbs because I feel like my blood sugar is low and I don't test. So that's what the next thing I got to talk about with Dr. Cyrus, if I should be testing my blood glucose and my ketones so that I'm not just having a feeling that might be related to the Parkinson's of the dizziness or the sweating or the fatigue, but is it really blood sugar? Do I need carbs? Do I need more fat or protein? So I'm kind of probably needing to move into testing. So yeah. And, um, and I'm so glad, I think you're in in great hands, uh, with Dr. Sivas. Um, but, uh, also, uh, you know, Catherine suggested, um, and I've had this experience for me too, is that drinking milk, um, does bring cravings for me. Oh, um, okay. Any kind of dairy brings some crazy craving, like it, it, it like awakens the beast. So I don't think that's necessarily a problem. It's just something to be aware of. Might be um, because I'm having so many more cravings. Like I'll, I'll go shopping. I'm like, well, I could just buy that box of ice cream and just like eat the whole thing before I go home. <laughs> so nobody knows I bought it. And then I'm like, why do I want to do that? But, um, yeah, I am consuming a lot more dairy and it might be triggering. So yeah, it, it, that's been my experience. Like I, the beast is silent. The beast is sleeping. Like the beast is like totally hibernating, like no problem. I will have a fourth of a cup of yogurt. And like the beast is like, what? Hello? Oh. Like, what are we eating today? What are we going to eat next? You know, why, I'm just like, why do, you, ah. why do you think that it does that? What? I have no idea. I just know that's my experience with dairy. Can I ask you guys this? Cause I'm, I'm not sure. I think some of you guys follow Brett Lloyd. Do you follow Brett Lloyd or do you know who he yes. is? Yes. He always, always says, and I think maybe you say this too, is don't taste anything sweet, which I'm right now drinking chocolate protein shake, <laughs> which is sweet with stevia. And I'm like, Ugh, and it has heavy cream in it and a little, sometimes I put coffee, sometimes I don't, but I'm like, I'm probably like sabotaging myself, but what is it about the sweet taste? Does it just make you just want more? I don't understand the science of it. I don't pretend to understand the science of it. I just know my experience and my experience is that whenever I can keep that sweet taste out of my mouth, I have little to no problems. And whenever I introduce that sweet taste in my mouth, that's whenever I have the problems. Okay. I know I got to, I had been off of it for a couple of months and then I needed, well, they suggested I use the chocolate protein shakes for healing from the surgery. And, and he, and Dr. Cyrus even said, this is like the worst nutrition, but it's like a stepping stone because you have to have something, although you could have bone broth, but you know, kind of the protein shakes was what they had in the hospital and what he actually had me use keto chow which I didn't care for, but, um, it's too foamy, but I think it's probably relatively okay for somebody recovering from surgery, but it's yeah. a hard, I think it's been a hard habit for me to. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, a, um, a hard addiction to break. Um, but I would definitely, um, say, stay in contact with, you know, the, your nutritionist, um, and the doctor, cause they know what's best for you to heal, um, yeah. during this time. But thank, thank you. you. I appreciate everybody. And, and I appreciate all your support and asking about me. That's, it makes me feel nice. Thank you. Oh, for- good. No, you're, you're a blessing, uh, Becky. And we're, we're grateful to have you in this group. Um, so next, um, we have Catherine, um, she posed a really, really great question. Um, and Catherine, do you mind, uh, repeating, uh, uh, kind of the background or, or that mm-hmm. question for us again? Absolutely. Um, I'm curious, or should I want to say, I just kind of wanted to share that um, I'm working with a nutritionist and with, in working with her, um, 
long story short, my background, I'll just say, I just recently lost 90 pounds again. You know, I've never probably lost that much, but, um, so I'm at this place where I, um, physically in weight want to stay. I'm happy where I'm at. I'd love to stay here. So I tried to present to my nutritionist about like, I'm feeling very um, lost lately because I'm not sure what maintenance looked like. I yo-yo dieted up and down, up and down, never reaching a, what would be considered a healthy weight range for myself in the last, oh, 31 years. Um, So here I am, I've arrived and I ask her, so what am I supposed to do now? You know, that's been my ongoing question this last month. I'm in such a foreign place for myself right now, especially being a, I call it a food addict all the way around. That is my addiction, whether it's restricting of food, eating too much food, eating the wrong food. The problem is my addiction is this little brain right here is focused solely on food 90% of my day. What am I going to eat? What am I not going to eat? You know, what am I going to buy at the store? What am I not going to buy? Like Becky, am I going to eat the whole half gallon of ice cream right now? I mean, what, you know, all these things. So here I am in this place. And the way, the way that I have arrived here is I was really ill. And so I started a carnivore diet last September 24th, 2021, just trying to heal my gut because it was in such disarray along the journey. I've healed so many wonderful things. I mean, I just, I'm 56 years old and I feel better than I have even since I was 30, probably. So I'm feeling really good. My weight seems to be at a really great place. So what do I do now? Her name's Danny, the woman I work with. And I'm like, what do I do now? You know, I, here I am. So what, now what do you suggest? What's the next step? And she tried to explain to me that this maintenance, as I so call it, is something basically that my diet world that I've lived in for, you know, 50 years or whatever, told me I had to restrict. And then if I over ate and gained weight and then restrict, and I had to keep playing this game and eventually you're going to make it to maintenance. And when you get there, then you'll do A, B, and C to make sure you stay there or I'm going to end up right back where I was. So what do I do? And, you know, her response was so wonderful. She explains it so much better, but basically there's nothing I need to do. I just keep do what I do. I'm in food freedom right now. I wake up, I eat, and then I go to bed later. I mean, that's just what I do. I'm not doing any magic. There's nothing I'm doing. I don't pre-plan my macros out. Nothing. I know I eat high fat because I've followed macros before to see where I am. Um, but for many months now, I hover in the same way in maintenance. My body's just happy with what I give it every day. And I don't question it. But at the same time, here's my brain saying, but I must be have to do something. There has to be something I have to do. Otherwise, this is too good to be true. There's there has to be a trick to it. A formula, there has to be something. And anyway, so here I am in that place trying to figure out what's that formula when apparently there's not a formula. So just keep doing what I'm doing. So anyway, I thought it was worth a little discussion in our food, in our food group recovery group. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's really important. And, um, you know, I liken it to uh, being like on a balance beam. And whenever, you know, you're, you're on a balance beam, you can't go all the way to the the left or all the way to the right, you have to be in balance. And at first a gymnast, like it's work, like they have to like maintain that balance of not going too far this way or too far that way. But then the, as the, the gymnast, you know, really, uh, strengthens those muscles and kind of not even strengthens those muscles, but, but learns how to use gravity for them. They work in that flow. And so that is this beautiful place that you're going to get to be in right now is to operate in that balance, operate in using the, the, the force of gravity with you to be able to find that balance and that flow throughout your day. Like you said, I wake up, I eat food. I go about my day. I go to bed. Like it's, it's, uh, it's like, for instance, you, you, uh, you pee every single day you, you poop, you know, every day. And so do you, do you think about it? Do you, do you plan for it? Do you, 
you know, no, it's just part of your day. It's part of your existence. And as humans, we eat food. Um, and so this is just another part of your process, a part of your existence. Um, so, uh, thank you so much for, for bringing that up. Um, Tom, go ahead. Yeah, you, you said it right. Uh, Emily, I was going to say that, uh, she already, uh, you already know that how to do maintenance. You're, you've been doing it already. So it's just, a, it's just a matter of just continuing what you're doing, just like Emily just said. So I was going to take my hand down after Emily, uh, who always explains things perfectly. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so. <laughs> But I also want to say my, my day is complete now that we've talked about poop multiple times today. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm really happy about that. And Ricardo, thank you for making for making me not the only uh, male here, uh, other than uh, Dad Larry. Uh, but he doesn't count because he's a moderator. <laughs> so hey Tom, I'm seeing you for the first time out of your hospital gown because I haven't been around. So you look cute oh, in that. That's right. You look cute oh, in that. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you so much. You look strong Appreciate and healthy it. too. You look very strong and healthy. So you must have a, can you give me an update on how you're yeah, doing? You, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Tom. But I mean, uh, Becky, if you want to watch the episodes, they're all on YouTube. Oh, okay, great. Sure. Yeah. But go ahead, Tom. I, uh, yeah, I'm doing okay, Becky. And uh, today, I, today I'm actually planting bulbs again. Uh, so um, Meryl and I went and got uh, one of those planter drills. Uh, so we've been planting bulbs all morning. We just took a break because... I think we put, we're up to like 150 right now. So we got another uh, probably about 50 or 60 to go. And then I got to put together a scaffolding because we have an electrician coming on uh, next week to, to put up a chandelier that's like 20 feet high. So yeah, so I'm, if I don't drop dead today, then I think we'll be good. So. <laughs> don't do that. That's awesome. A, that's fair. You look really good. You look strong. Your color, everything looks great. You look you right, Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Andia, I would love to hear you weigh in on maintenance. Um, so this will probably um, answer, uh, B Becky, uh, you had asked a question about addiction. So I'm probably going to hit on some reasons why our brain goes back. So we're not used to, to maintenance and with addiction, you know, for me, I used to be addicted to methamphetamines and that's a substance. And I know if I go back to using that, I'm going to die. So it's a life and death disease, right? Well, when we're addicted to food, we need to have structure and we need to learn how to maintain because we still have to eat. We can't just be abstinent or, or also we would die, right? If we didn't put nutrients into our bodies. So, um, you know, one of the, the, the things that was already touched on is you, you, you intuitively do know, and, and I think that you're already doing it. And I am not a nutritionist by any means, like, you know, but I think that following the, the guides that you have, but you're in such this amazing place that you've done all the hard work. One of the things I heard in your share is you're starting to recognize your old thinking. Like you're, you're recognizing irrational beliefs. Honestly, everyone, the gold nuggets of therapy, the one relationship in our life that's solely based upon like the world revolving around us, we get to be aware of those old ir irrational beliefs and all, all of those um, things. So you get to focus on your thinking and you are, you are literally like bringing some of that up and old uh, neural networks. So for neurons that used to fire together, they're wired together. We're always going to have the disease of addiction. There is no cure for this and we are going to get triggered, you know, and things like Becky, you were talking about like sweets and whatnot, eating or, or, you know, triggering, uh, Emily talked about the, you know, certain things triggering her monster, certain things trigger my monster too. And I know I have to stay away from those, but guess what? life happens and we're all humans and we've had experience and there may be an emotional connection to um you opening the refrigerator 
Well, guess what? You're going to have to open the refrigerator pretty much every single day for the rest of your life. So old neural networks are going to like fire. And that is like the, the, the stuff that we're going to have to fight every day. And as far as maintenance goes, it's all about our habits. We get to create structure around our, our new way of eating. And the more and more of those things that we take on, those little tiny habits and those little tiny tweaks. And it sounds like, Catherine, you've done a lot of that hard work because now you're in this place where you're feeling good. And our addiction doesn't know that. It wants freaking chaos <laughs> and it doesn't have chaos. You get to be content and happy and that feeling's uncomfortable. And in fact, any feeling, whether it's good or bad, is going to feel uncomfortable. You know why? Because there's no neural networks. When new neural networks start talking to each other, that's literally uncomfortability. Mm. So even if the feeling is good and, and, and it, 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 it's, if it's foreign, if we're not used to it, we're like, oh my gosh, right now I'm just content. I'm feeling joy. Is this normal? Maybe I should go F some stuff up because this is like, that's what I'm used to. I need, I need to have some freaking problems to take care of, right? No, no, we don't. We, we need to just embrace those new feelings and they're okay. Feelings are okay. And they're, and they're going to happen. But we also have to remember the disease of addiction is literally a super highway. It's in our head. And we get to form new coping skills and new things. And every little tiny new thing that gets formed, a little vine will like grow over that old super highway. So it's always going to be there. And we have to know that things are going to trigger us. Things can definitely awaken that addiction. But if we want to continue in maintenance, it's just about learning the new coping skills and learning about our old awarenesses. It might be accepting new things, but, um, you know, you touched on some of the, the old thinking and now you get to really crack down on like the, the true healing. And that's our mindset. That's like being trapped in here and like remembering, like I was a yo-yo dieter too. So like, and, and I am in recovery from bulimia. So I'm, I'm still to this day, fighting old irrational thinking that I have to address and I have to accept like new ways and the little tiny tweaks and habits that I make to have structure around my new life and the maintenance that I want is the, that's where the magic happens. Like you get to do this amazing, amazing work now while the other structure that you've created to get to this point is, is, is starting to like, be a new path. Like that's starting to be a new, a new path in your, in your brain. So I just think, thank you so much for sharing. This is a hundred percent relevant to the topic. And then Becky, I hope I answered your question too. Um, so yeah, that, that would be my, my, two, my two long sense. <laughs> thank you for saying that, that, that makes me feel hopeful and inspired. <laughs> thank you. And India, that was a mic drop. <laughs> like that was an absolute mic drop. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Betsy, go ahead. So India, when those, when we're making those new pathways, you know, with new habits and things like that, will those new pathways become stronger than the old pathways? That is a great question, Betsy. And this is exactly why I put the book Please? in the chat about atomic habits. Those I've done that. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and Emily's holding it up. The, yep. When we create habits, they sure will become stronger because the old way we used to do things, we're not doing things that way anymore. So those old neural connection, I always, I always, um, when I was little, I used to like, everything had a head and it talked, right? So think about your, your, your neurons as best friends. Your, those old pathways for our addiction, all those neurons that used to hang out together, they're freaking best friends. And it's hard to break those best friends apart, but we can do it. We, we can introduce those people to new people. And guess what happens when we introduce new relationships in our life? It's uncomfortable at first. <laughs> And yeah. we might, we might really love the, and fall in love with the outcome of what a habit will bring. 
So like, I know for me, I'm addicted to like, um, like starting new things. My problem is maintaining that stuff. So I have to do baby steps and and only conquer one thing at a time. That's a learning I have from being on and off this way of eating for the last four years. I know now that I can't take it on all at once. So what I say to that, Becky, is when you do, do what Betsy, uh, Betsy, that's (laughs) okay. Um, (laughs) Betsy, when you do the habit over and over and over again, you're cre- you're you're allowing those those new neurons to talk to each other together more often, and then they will become the neurons that are firing together, are wired together, and that's yep. what we want, because that's right. what's gonna build a new pathway off of our super highway of addiction. Uh, that's always gonna be in and underneath there, but we don't have to take that pathway. So I if hope anybody- that answers your question. That's yeah, it does. And if anybody's interested in a wonderful book study, it was last year on two crazy ketos and Rachel did the best book study on atomic habits. She's gifted. So look that up on YouTube and it's a great book. And I have made, I mean, I go to bed early now. I used to stay up till two or three in the morning. Now it's easy to go to bed by 10, easy. So, but it's these other habits, you know, the eating habits that are so much harder. <laughs> what's so a habit? That, what's a habit that you want to try to break? Maybe we can help you think of a pathway to break it. Um, because Dr. Cyrus is talking about, like, if you watch some of his YouTube videos, he's talking about sticking something else, like, like, um, that bridges that, um, that, that puts the neuro neuro pathway so that you're training your brain instead of responding to food, you respond to like, okay, when that happens, I'm going to go for a walk or I'm going to do a crossword puzzle or I'm going to go call my girlfriend or, you know, like you start having a habit that you replace your old habit with so that you start to say, well, you almost force yourself to do it to begin with, but then it becomes that your brain wants to go do that habit. But what, 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 what's one thing? Cause we probably have the same thing where we can come up with a, like a, a creative idea together. I'm not sure if it's technically food, but lately I've been following, I think too many people and trying to do too many things. And mm. then I get discouraged, you know, and I feel like a failure because I didn't do this. You know, I didn't, mm. my macros weren't perfect or my numbers, my ketones and my glucose, you know, glucose wasn't perfect. Um, you know, and I'm just following so many people. One doctor says this and another doctor, you know, doctors, MDs say that. Mm. Mm. And it, and it has to do with food and, and numbers. And, um, there's just too much going on in my mind right now. My numbers weren't good this morning and it ruined the Mm -hmm. whole morning. (laughs) Yeah. And, um, Andia, I, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. We are addicted to the information. Um, that is the nature of our disease is to just gather, 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 grasp, 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 you know, incorporate, incorporate, incorporate. Let's do this new shiny thing. Let's do this new shiny thing. Let's follow this new doctor. Let's follow this new YouTuber. And that's why I literally have an eight week system that I focus everyone on not listening to me, not listening to Dr. So-and-so not listening to anybody else but I teach them to listen to themselves because that is where all of the answers are, is that inner clarity. And I know that we've heard this almost to the point where it's just like, you don't even hear it. It's almost like it's, it's, it's like you don't, it's unrecognizable. Yeah. 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 The answers are within you. Yeah. 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 You know, listen to yourself. It's really that simple. And it's really right there to follow your inner knowing. And, and you know, this Betsy, you had this experience already with, you knew that you knew that you knew that staying up till 2am was not what was best for you. And you did that. You, nobody else came into your house 
and re and rewired or reworked your sleep habits, you did that. And so to recognize that that power that is within you that changed that habit is still that power that is within you that can literally change any other habit. The possibilities are endless. Okay. I just started listening to, and I don't think it's even a keto book or anything like that, but it's called intuitive eating. I can't even recommend it because I am not far enough in, but when I was sick last week with a stomach bug, once I started eating more nutritiously and it was still keto, but um, I felt so much better because I was kind of like eating what I, because I was not feeling good. So I was kind of eating what I felt, felt good. Mm -hmm. And I, and it did, I felt, I mean, I felt so much better. Yeah. But so I you have that, in, you have that intuition inside of you. Okay. Thanks everybody again. <laughs> No, that's awesome. I'm so glad that you brought that up. Um, and, um, I really, I, I, I really think that, um, it's very important to recognize that this is the human experience. Um, this is literally what everyone is going through, whether they talk about it or not. And, um, I, I hate sometimes when people look at me and they think I've got it all together. Um, and I want to like scream from the rooftops, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, this is still a process. This is still something that I work through on a daily basis. Um, and, uh, to, to possibly answer you, Catherine, um, what's next is, well, what was next for me was to share my experience with others and to help others. Um, and it was amazing for me whenever I did share my story and people came out of the woodworks, um, people from other countries would just message me and ask me questions. And then I was able to keep those muscles flexed of keeping my addiction at bay because I was practicing it, even though I wasn't needing to practice it actively in my addiction in that, like. I didn't have to put down the donut. I was flexing those muscles to be able to actively help other people. And that even gave me more power to be able to operate in serving other people. And that's why I continue to do this every day because I, I love seeing the, the lessons that I had and being able to use them to help other people. Awesome. Oh, and Catherine says, I'm so glad that you share your journey. It helps me so much. Good. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Um, anybody else have anything that they want to add? Um, either a question or a comment or update anything. Uh, go ahead, Deborah or Debbie. Um, I'm, I just wanted to say that I'm new here and in this meeting and I'm just loving this meeting. It almost makes me teary. But um, what I really, uh, I always try to look at addiction and I'm addicted to the information. When Betsy started talking, it's like I, I am so overwhelmed with things to try to do that I'm even getting teary. Um, and um, when Becky talked about Dr. Sybus, I just saw that insulin suppression video that he put out. And so now I'm all into that. Oh, should I really restrict carbs that much? Or I'm just really confused in finding my baseline. And I've been keto. I've been sick for about five years. I have Lyme disease. I stopped chasing diagnosis because it doesn't help you to get one anyway. Um, but I'm still having symptoms and I'm really frustrated at this point. And just this week, I've um, I've always been very strict keto, but I do tend to snack, and that's a big bad one for me. Um, so I stopped doing that this week, and I cut out things like nuts and cheese and stuff. And I don't 
feel any different. And I do track my numbers. My numbers have improved greatly. Um, so I don't even know if I should track numbers or I just feel really, really confused. <laughs> it's not that I'm craving things and eating things I don't think I sh I'm supposed to. I don't have that problem, but I yeah, I feel really confused on what to do, or where to go, or what to yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's that's pretty much the main thing. Whenever people come to me um, to work with me one on one, I would say about ninety five percent of people that come to me um, are are operating in that confusion. Um, and even in the carnivore community, um, you would think, oh, well, it's cut and dry. You know, it's just, you know, this or keto. Um, but it's not. Um, there are so many different arguments for high fat, high protein, um, eating windows, um, fasting, uh, not fasting. Um, there's, yeah. there's so much. And so, the best voice that you can hone in on and listen to is your own. And I know that that's, that's difficult for people whenever there is so much noise. Um, but I would encourage you to start with two minutes a day, just two minutes, because whenever you're, you're operating in this chaos, and you, you're like, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to focus on my inner voice for 15 minutes, for 20 minutes, for 30 minutes. And then you try and you fail and you quit. And so you need an attainable goal and it might be one minute. And just for one minute, sit still and don't think about anything else except for listening to your inner voice and your inner self. Some people call it like prayer. Some people call it meditation. Um, some people call it centering. Um, but I have found in my personal experience that I just started with two minutes and I was very intentional. And, and what I would do is I would have a, a like a notebook. I would have like a, a little, um, a notebook next to me. And anytime a thought came into my mind in that two minutes of you need to do the laundry, you need to get milk. You need to do this. You need to do that. You need to do that. I would just jot it down. I would jot down that word and I would go back and I would go back to recentering and just focusing on me. And the first couple of times, the whole two minutes was me just brain dumping and me just getting all the junk out of my head. And I was like, well, that didn't do anything, but it did. The next day I did three minutes. And then at the very end, the last like 15 seconds, I was able to focus on just me. And then the next day, four minutes and then five. And now I do about on, on average, I do 25 minutes to 30 minutes every morning and 25 minutes to 30 minutes every night. And it has transformed my life because I know my voice. It's like learning. Spanish or learning Chinese, like you're learning the language of you. You're learning to listen to yourself and hear your voice. And right now it's hard to hear your voice whenever you have all of this other noise in head. And so I would encourage you to start small and to just try and, and to allow yourself to make those gradual improvements um, as you go along, does, does that resonate with you or make any sense? Yes, I have so much chaos in my head. I mean, I get up in the morning and put on a YouTube. <laughs> so yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and Andia, thank you so much for that, that, um, distinction. This is so important. Prayer is talking to our higher power or God mm -hmm. and meditation is listening to our higher power or God. Yeah. That is so true. I think I definitely was under that um, confusion in that I would just sit there and I would pray, God, I need this. God, I need that. God, can you work in this life? Get, God, can you do this part? God, God, can you do that? And instead I'm picking up the phone and I'm going, what do you want to tell me? And I just listen. And he literally talks 
and literally tells me going, going through that. Um, so, um, thank you so much for that, Andia. Um, I'm glad you were saying this, Emily, uh, in the month of October, I had a goal of 12 minutes a day and just couldn't do it consistently. I'm going to make November a two minute goal. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. Start with two minutes, start where you're at, you know, you, cause you want to operate in success, um, not worrying about everything else. Um, so, um, that is our time. Um, oh, go ahead, Angela. Angela, can you, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, I made it towards the end. Just wanted to say, I understand where the one lady coming from as far as retaining information. Cause I'd be feeling the same way. It's like, yeah, I know so much. I didn't research a lot. I listened to a lot of doctors. I listened to a lot of people, but it's hard for me to apply the stuff or to stick yes. with it. So that's my thing. It's like, I know what to do, but I'd be trying to, do this and then switch it to that and then switch it to that just like she said like you said with the half fat or the moderate protein or the fasting or you know it's it's i don't be knowing which way to go i want the fastest way because i want to hurry up and lose this weight and i end up sticking to nothing so so that's all i really want to say i understand where she's coming from you're Not right you're right boat. we get so confused by all the distractions and, and, and that's really, um, I think honestly, one of the things that we don't realize is part of the problem is the noise. And so quieting that noise and really honing in on and focusing in on what is the best path for us, not comparing ourselves to everybody else. What is the best path for Angela? That is where the, the true transformation comes. And, um, so thank you so much for, for adding that in Angela. I appreciate it. No problem. So good to have you here. And, um, I, um, I'm so grateful, um, just to have your friendship and I hope that you come back next week. Yes, we'll do. <laughs>